located in the Central Valley of California. The Fresno Fire Department. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. This 24 is with a new crew from a new location. We start the day with the crew from Truck 11 at the shop near Station 3 downtown. This part of the shop is dedicated to the service of the department's SCBA's air bottles, masks, and packs. My name is Dennis Katoon. I'm working for the Fresno Fire Department as a SCBA repair tech. It's going on for now uh, seven years. I became a firefighter back in 1974, which wasn't that far ago, long ago. But a friend of mine in college, his dad was a firefighter, and he kind of got me interested in taking the fire science classes, and pretty soon I was taking tests and I got hired by the county North Central in 74. So Worked there as a firefighter and a firefighter specialist uh, and left there after five years and came to Fresno City in 1979 and uh, been, been here for 28 years as a firefighter specialist and a firefighter hazmat, hazmat specialist also. Okay. This is our portable unit that we use out in the field. We'll put this in the back of a pickup camper shell and it fastens down. We can slide it out at the station. We'll do a performance test on their mask, make sure that the valves are all, exhalation valve is working. Uh, it passes all the tests, simple bench test. Once that's done, when I do that, I also usually clean them because they're always a little bit dirty. And then after we do that, we'll test the personnel with the Port Account Pro Fit, it's an evaluation of the seal on the mask to confirm that they're getting a good seal, everything's working appropriate, and that's about a seven minute process uh, just to test them on that. So we do that basically once a year, we go out and test all the employees, make sure they meet the requirements or, or they can pass the test and uh, go from there. Okay, this is the Bauer fill station that we've had now for 12, 13 years. It's Service to us very well, no major problems at all. Uh, we fill the station, this is a three tank station, so we can fill three bottles at a time. I just finished filling the last ones that we had on the rack. I usually fill the bottles while I'm testing, or doing the repairs. I'll slip them in, do some testing, come back later, and once they're filled up, I'll re remove them and put them in the rack. This is the noisy part. You gotta shut all the valves. The bleeders bleed all the pressure off the hose. Still hose. Once they've been filled, we'll put them in, put them in the rack over here. And they're ready to ready to use again. Truck 11 has arrived with its crew. Battery's okay. Several crew members need to get their mask fit tests completed today. Fogs up because you're not under pressure. You don't get the blow by across the top. That's where that's where the UVEX really comes in great. And the fog. Not helpful right now. 
Nope. Too late. <laughs> no reading. Testing sound good. Rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. These take the shape of long round arch lightning. There's enough glass for 22. We're getting ready to have a big hire. Oh, we might be leaving here tonight. Dennis, we might be going here. If, if we can get available. We're going to start over again. That's all right. You want to jump it? Where Five, it? six, something. It's right down here. Residential fire for engine three. The crew jump back in the rig and will head to the store. They are available on the radio. It's time for the crew to shop for their chow for the next 48 hours. Sometimes not as easy as it looks for everyone to want the same food. Ice cream is always important. You got the ribs. What do you think first side? Vegetables. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, bread. The crew from Truck 11 head back to the station. This is Station 11, currently with only Truck 11 and a battalion chief. They would love to have an engine company here. This station not only had an engine company, but part of the station was used as a substation for the police department back in the day. Captain Carl DeLapp is on the computer, keeping up with the necessary documentation needed for the department. Firefighter Erickson cuts the vegetables for tonight's dinner. Uh, tonight for dinner we're going to have some uh, barbecue pork ribs and some barbecue rattlesnake fresh from the foothills of uh, Fresno County, California. Well, uh, reptile's heart, if you remove the sack and hold it out in the sun, up to about two days later it'll continue to beat. So, Who caught the snake? Uh, I did. Did you really? I did, yeah. What kind of snake is it? It's a, a rattlesnake. So. Chow's on. Tonight, the firefighters get to sit for dinner. Call comes in from dispatch. The crew from Truck 11 is out the door.
We arrive on scene to find a vehicle that has hit a sign in the center median of the street's intersection. Over at the gas station, the police have the driver of this vehicle in handcuffs as others look on. The vehicle was pinned on the pipe that held the direction sign, and fluids have leaked onto the roadway. Engine 20 arrives on scene. Captain Robert Castillo, whom we first met when he made captain and was located at Station 3, is with his crew as backup. The tow vehicle has arrived on scene. They pull a line to help keep the scene safe in case water is necessary. We were dispatched uh, by uh, request of the Fresno Police Department for a vehicle accident. Uh, the initial claim was non-injury and uh, they had a vehicle that was leaking fuel. Uh, we came and uh, realized that the fuel cell on this vehicle was punctured and leaked gasoline into the street. Uh, we stood by and called an engine company because we are going to have to move the car and uh, that way we could stand by with a line in case it ignited while it was being loaded on the vehicle. Uh, fortunately, we loaded it successfully, and we're absorbing the last of the fuel right now. So uh, this incident was brought to successful completion. A call comes in. Truck 11 is out the door. Truck 11 is en route to a vehicle accident. The crew is directed across the intersection. On the left is a police vehicle 
that looks like it has been T-boned. Whoa. As the rig pulls up, the captain gets out for a quick assessment. You can see that this scene has a heavy police presence. Probably him. He took a lot of impact on the side. The other one's just sort of dazed. These two right here, I don't know about other cars involved or other patients. Two officers are trapped inside this vehicle. The officer on the passenger side is completely pinned in. The firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics are working to stabilize their patients in the vehicle. Both look and sound like they are in pain. The crew goes into action with assessing the incident. They are coming up with plans A, B, and C for this much needed extrication. The captain instructs the engineer to pull the engine closer to the vehicle so as to make it much more efficient as they remove the tools needed for this extrication. The truck crew open up a compartment and remove their Jaws of Life head and hose lines. They grab the spreaders and cutters and quickly get set up. The first responders are keeping their patients talking, awake and alert as they describe what will happen next, step by step. The door is open enough now to go in with cutters to cut the door's hinges. with the Jaws of Life spread and find the first pinch point between the passenger's door and the B pillar.
One hint is now cut. One more to go. He being a larger sized man, it is a bit more difficult to remove him from the vehicle. They do not want any damage to his neck, spine, or his internal organs. Paramedics now have the necessary access to stabilize their patients. The patient has been somewhat stabilized for the moment. On the driver's side of the vehicle, they now have the door open and the first officer has been removed from the vehicle and is being packaged up for transport. With the scene clear from patients, the crew begins to pack up their gear and return it to the truck. The ambulance transporting the officers to the hospital leaves the scene. We had a report that there was a PD unit involved with two officers as potential victims. Um, they didn't say anything else about victims, but I knew that if we had two law enforcement officers, that there was going to be a lot of law enforcement presence at the scene. Uh, they typically don't operate with the incident command system, so Battalion 3 could try and establish a unified command and try and corral some of the uh, activity so we could get in there and do the extrication. Um, Truck 11's crew uh, got in there and looked at what would be the quickest uh, way to get in and uh, extricate the patients while EMS was, we were assisting EMS in evaluating their condition and uh, we made the decision to take both doors on the passenger side for an officer that was pinned in there and removed the pillar. That operation went pretty smooth and then engine 2 came in and supported our operations in the extrication and also got down a safety line on the ground and assisted with patients on both sides of the car. Um, we had lots of room here because uh, law enforcement had cleared a big area for uh, people to work, so that worked out well. The battalion chief, the captains and firefighters all meet to recap the incident.
All right, gentlemen. Have a good night, huh? See ya. Have a good, See night. Have a good one. The crew jump back into the rig. Truck 11 is AOR. The truck company pulls into the station. Not far behind, rolls in the battalion chief. 